I'm finally going to explain some of the international intrigue that is going on between Live Nation and the federal government. There's a historic antitrust case that has been brought by the Department of Justice against Live Nation Ticketmaster. But what you might not know is that it was Saudi Arabia that bailed out Live Nation during COVID because so many concerts got canceled. They were one of the biggest shareholders in Live Nation after that, and in a few years were able to double the value of their stock from $500 million to a billion. The Senate's Permanent Subcommittee on Investigations already had concerns about Saudis getting involved in monopolies in the United States. Now they've taken over MMA. This same Senate committee also subpoenaed Live Nation for an unrelated investigation because they wouldn't comply with the Senate's request for documents. The Department of Justice files its antitrust lawsuit against Live Nation Ticketmaster but much to my surprise and other people who pay attention, they also named the Oakview Group as a co-conspirator in their um, abuse of their monopoly power. The Oakview Group owns and operates tons of venues around the world. The founders of the Oakview Group happen to be the former heads of the two big concert promoters in the country. So we have Tim Laiwecki of AEG and Irving Azoff of Ticketmaster Live Nation. A big part of the case are emails that the DOJ was able to get their hands on. And Oakview Group in those emails calls themselves Live Nation's pimp and hammer. These emails show that Live Nation and Oakview Group worked together to ensure Live Nation's monopoly but they have other co-conspirators too. Silver Lake is a private equity firm that gave $100 million to the Oakview Group to expand their businesses. Live Nation was pissed that Silver Lake invested in a competitor of theirs in Australia. Now Live Nation threatens the Oakview Group that they will stop using them unless the Oakview Group gets Silver Lake to sell the competitor called TEG. Michael Rapino, the CEO of Live Nation Ticketmaster, got in touch with Irving Azoff of the Oakview Group and Irving let him know he would get Silver Lake to sell TEG. Rapino basically told Silver Lake, Oakview Group is our guys. So you better comply with what we all want you to do. Now that is cartel behavior, which is way bigger than just Ticketmaster Live Nation's monopoly. I've been on the Oakview Group's ass for a couple of years now, and nobody knows who they are in the fandom, so they don't understand the magnitude of what's really going on here. And I was floored when I saw the DOJ's lawsuit the Washington Post reporter named Jamal Khashoggi was dismembered in a foreign embassy because he was a dissident against Saudi Arabia. Now, the U.S. government then in turn said, hey, Saudis, what money you got in venture capital in the United States? So the Saudis investment portfolio in private equity included Silver Lake. We have the Saudis private investment fund being one of the biggest shareholders of Live Nation and a big investor in Silver Lake. Now, they're not the only investor in Silver Lake. So is it possible that the Saudis wanted to get their Silver Lake investment in line, get them out of competing with Live Nation, so it's sort of like a bigger monopoly than we know. So across industries, you'll see how private equity and other bigger institutional investors really mask how consolidated our corporate environment is. Remember how we just had a huge hack of Ticketmaster where 500 million accounts data was leaked 
Ticketmaster tried to blame the leak on Snowflake. Snowflake was adamant that they were not involved in this data breach. And Live Nation said that the unlawful access actually came on May 20th, which was just a few days before the DOJ's antitrust lawsuit was filed. And there was notice that it was coming soon, too. And that same week, the Saudis sold $15 billion of stock they held in the United States. One of the intelligence guys I follow said that the hack of Ticketmaster felt like someone was having a temper tantrum. Right? Is it hacking when you're given the keys to the kingdom? The Senate's investigation committee was pissed that companies like McKinsey, who worked with the Saudis, would not answer a congressional subpoena because the Saudi court told them not to. The more you look, the more collusion you will see. Maybe this is why Live Nation is reading my Substack. I'm just a tiny account, but I like to think of myself as a threat to Live Nation.